it's Amber from Gear, Glasses, and Gadgets, and today we're going to talk to you all about travel. We're going to show you what's in our bag when we travel and also give you some great pointers. Okay, bird. Nobody else is awake yet. to you from Playa del Carmen, Mexico, where we just shot Angie and Gary's wedding a couple days ago. We know that traveling with all of your equipment can be very intimidating, so we wanted to break it down for you how we do things and give you some just general travel tips. As most of you already know, you should always carry on your cameras, lenses, etc. But for this particular trip, we decided to split all of our gear in half, meaning camera bodies, lenses, batteries, chargers, memory cards. We wanted everything to be split completely in half and put in two separate bags. So let's take a look and see what's inside each of our bags. This is the bag that I carried on with me. It is a low pro backpack. And one quick tip I'm going to insert in here is that if you're carrying uh, photography equipment backpacks, a lot of the times they'll have like a picture of a camera on the front of them. And what we like to do is take a piece of gaffer's tape and put it over it just in case someone that's ill-willed were to be looking for someone that may have expensive stuff, you're not gonna stick out like a sore thumb. So I'm gonna show you what was in my backpack for this trip. First of all, we have the Sony a7S II with the Sony 28 to 135, one of my personal favorite lenses. Then we had another Sony a7S II, both with battery grips. Then I had an 85 millimeter G Master and I had my Rode microphone to go on top of my camera. And I had a baggie full of batteries, a battery charger. Then I also had my favorite, my Hoodman uh, eye cup, which is essential for shooting outside in the Mexican sun so you can actually use your EVF and not the back of the screen. And also necessary for people who wear glasses. Let's see what else I have in here. I also have a couple, of course, recorders. And then I had some mics in here, but I'm actually wearing one. And also in this compartment here, we have our MacBook Pro. We absolutely love this backpack and we will have a link to it in the description box below. Okay, so this is the bag that Garrett carried on, and it is the Think Tank Airport Security version two. We actually use this bag for all of our weddings, and we will do another what's in our bag later, um, just for normal weddings, but since this is a destination, it's gonna have some different stuff in it. So first of all, we have an A7S II. We have our trusty A6300 with a 10 to 18 lens on it. We have a Canon 70 to 200 with our Metabones Mark IV adapter. We have the 90 millimeter macro. What else is in here? Pilot Fly H1. We're getting ready to upgrade to the H2 soon. We have another charger for batteries, of course. We have a baggie full of batteries. We have memory cards, hard drive, extra hard drive. We have microphones. And what else is in here? This is just full of stuff. This thing you can load down really full. It's surprising what all you can have in here. Oh, this little thing is great. You need this on vacation. It's a uh, portable battery backup thing. Wonderful. We also have another one, an anchor one, which we love. Ooh, 
do it the right way. I have a couple audio recorders. One I'm actually wearing, and here's the second one. So we brought four audio recorders all together. We also have the G Master 24 to 70, which we're using to record this, so we can't really show it to you. Um, we also have an LED light panel. Batteries for the LED light panel. What else is in here? Several lens cloths, of course, normal stuff. And this wonderful thing is um, the uh, USB hub to charge. You can fit so much stuff in this bag. It's kind of unbelievable. We are able to fit everything that we use for a, let's say, normal wedding. Um, that we're not flying to in this bag. So I just, I can't stress to you enough how versatile this is. And we absolutely love it. It's the airport security version too. And as always, make sure you check with your airline to make sure it's the right carry-on size. We flew Southwest here to Mexico, it was fine. Um, for international flight, we flew to Las Vegas with this, it was fine as a carry-on. So, um, but I don't wanna be the one to say, yes, do it, and then, they don't let you on the plane with it. So there you go. I'm gonna to touch on this very quickly, but whenever we are shooting a normal wedding back home, we can fit five bodies, seven lenses, our gimbal, all of our batteries, all of our recorders. Uh, we can fit a couple light panels in here. So you can just cram this full of stuff and just we can work out of just this alone on a wedding day. We're gonna do another what's in our bag for our local home weddings, but we, just wanted to quickly say how much you can fit in here and again we didn't want to carry all of that in one bag to Mexico just for safety reasons we wanted to split it all up to make sure that if something crazy happened we would still have what the contents of one of them and we could potentially shoot a whole wedding I mean it would be a little rougher and we wouldn't necessarily have everything we wanted um, as far as lenses go but we still could have done it so just always be smart and be aware of your surroundings and be vigilant whenever you're traveling to any destination. Another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is memory, storage. A tip that we have is never format your memory cards whenever you're on vacation. Always try to have enough memory cards that you don't have to format them at all. And then whenever you get back to your room for the night, copy it over to your laptop. And then what we do is we copy it over to two of these little portable hard drives. So there are technically four copies of this wedding floating around. Uh, of course, I don't have one of them with me because it's in the safe back in our room. So have, always have your memory cards, never format them, make as many copies as you can. So we're gonna split all of our footage up to where that all of our four copies are never in the same place at the same time. So in this part, I'm gonna talk to you about several different things, but first let's talk about the Anchor Battery Backup. Um, I really love these for traveling, you're always needing your phone charged at some point. And this is actually charging our Sony uh, RX100 Mark IV right now, which is an amazing travel camera. I'll touch on that in a minute. We also have this Anchor USB port. Almost everything that we carry with us will charge USB. So we have several of these micro USB cords, plug it into your wall, and then you have automatically have four different uh, sources to charge uh, your USB. The third thing I want to talk to you about are these um, little battery chargers for your Sony batteries. They are, of course, micro USB, so you just plug these in. It charges two at a time. They're like $12 on Amazon, so we have maybe, I think we have three or four of them. Um, they're great for traveling because they're so small and it charges two at a time. And lastly, of course, I want to tell you a little bit about the Sony RX100 Mark IV. This is an amazing travel camera. I know that we've already touched on this, but one thing that we've noticed um, during this vacation is that whenever Garrett is out shooting B-roll and he has an A7S II with a 24 to 70 G Master and a tripod and a slider shooting B-roll around the resort, he gets a lot of attention. So people come up to him and talk to him about 
well, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And, and you know, it's just like, sometimes you just want to get your work done because it's hot and humid. With this, he can just walk around, hand hold it, get super slow motion. It also shoots in 4K, so he's getting really great shots with it. And it's just, he can hand hold it and not draw a lot of attention to him. Plus, of course, my favorite, selfie mode. That's my absolute favorite. Two of Garrett's favorite things about this camera is that it's a Zeiss 24 to 70 in his pocket and it also has NFC so he just touches his phone to the side of it, transfers the photo that he wants and he can immediately post it to Facebook or Instagram for everyone to see. to travel with our hardware is to split it up inside our luggage with our clothing in it. So one person gets a tripod, monopod, and light stand, and the other person gets a tripod, monopod, and slider. That way, um, of course, you know, splitting it up is going to make it less likely for everything to be lost. And then it's inconspicuous because you don't have one giant case with all of your hardware in it. So I just pack our clothing around it and it works perfectly. We really like these tripods, monopods, and slider that are carbon fiber. We've recently switched everything over to the carbon fiber tripods and the smaller heads. And then we have the carbon fiber Siru monopods with the smaller feet and the smaller heads. So I think with all of our stuff, we've shaved about 10 pounds off of our hardware, which is huge whenever you're traveling. And of course, we'll have links to these in our description box below. That means more shoes. Of course, you know that we brought our Inspire One to Mexico with us. And we have the Inspire One with the X3 camera on it. The way we like to travel with this is we put it in this wonderful backpack. However, we like to put it with our checked luggage. Yes, we put it in the backpack and put it in our checked luggage, piece of luggage, pack clothes around it, goes through just fine, no problems. One thing you do have to do though is carry on your batteries and carry on your controller. So you make sure you take this all out of here. So really the only thing that's gonna be in this backpack when we put it with our check luggage is the Inspire One. We do put some other electronic stuff in here whenever we're flying just to save some space. Um, that is, is fine, you know, your extra blades and stuff, but always make sure you take those batteries out of here. You do not want those in here underneath the plane. And of course we're here in Mexico and I wanted to make sure that it was actually legal for us to fly here. So check online and make sure it's legal for wherever you're going to be able to use a drone because they're still kind of a hot topic and you don't want to get in trouble and end up in a jail somewhere in a country where you don't know the language. So just make sure you check your, um, check the rules and regulations of where you're going. We've had no problems flying it. The people here at the resort are actually like, oh, that's cool. And they, they really love talking to Garrett about it. So we're really having a good time with it. Not being stupid. Just don't be stupid whenever you're flying it. Fly smart, people. Another thing to keep in mind whenever you're shooting in hot and humid climates is that it may take a while for your cameras to defog from being in a nice air conditioned hotel room going outside. So if you have to do a first look, you can't just jump outside and say, hey, let's start shooting. You need to wait for each of the pieces of glass that are inside your lens and the sensor on the camera to uh, defog and acclimate to the hotter, humid climate. One thing that is going to make it easier getting back into the United States is going to your local customs um, office and having them fill out a form for you that just basically lists all of your high value uh, merchandise that you have with you, 
such as your cameras, lenses, laptop, iPad, things like that, along with a serial number so you don't have to pay tax to get back into the country. Our local customs agent says that this is a free service and you just have to make an appointment with them and there. He was very friendly. If you have any travel hacks or tips that you want to share with everyone, make sure you leave a comment below. Also, thank you so much for subscribing to our channel and please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching again and LLAP friends. <laughs>